Yeah, ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. But then later there's running and then screaming. The world has just changed so radically and we're all running to catch up. How can we possibly have the slightest idea of what to expect? The best intentions. Some of the worst things imaginable have been done with the best intentions. Dr. Malcolm. I have to share a few campfire stories with my uncle. You can convince the Washington Post and the skeptical inquirer of whatever you want. But I was there, I know what happened, and so do you. I, I don't think you're giving us our due credit. Our scientists have done things which nobody's ever done before. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they didn't stop to think if they should. Hello, welcome to the June edition of Jurassic Minutes. Yes, Jurassic June, uh, where we'll be discussing recent movie, toy, and franchise news for Jurassic series. I'm Brad. I'm Dave. Uh, we are rebooting the system and discussing franchise news that's come out over this last month. And uh, some of that includes Jurassic World Dominion getting back into production. Jurassic June has uh, seen several new collectibles that's going to put more strains on our wallets. And um, for the fourth time since its release, Jurassic Park's been number one at the box office. Uh, we all can pretty much guess why, but we'll get more into that later on the show. David, Jurassic June. A um, little bit more somber one this year because of uh, what's going on in the world, but um, there has been some movement in the Jurassic communities and uh, some stuff, Jurassic themes, been happening this month. Yeah, just June's been a bit more uh, somber than they have in the rat last couple of years. I've, I've been obvious reasons why. Of course, it even put a damper on our dinosaurs, but the system's ready and the system's... <laughs> we sent Arnold off to the uh, <clears throat> to the bunker to go reboot, go reboot the system. <laughs> uh, we just don't have Lex in the control room. There's no, there's no one there to push the execute button, but um, I've yeah, I definitely a lot of the uh, fan meetups and that sort of stuff that happens this sort of time of the month or this month uh, never happened, of course, because of COVID and like a lot of creators and have just sort of been uh, been a bit down down and out as well. But one thing I have found this month that's been up more so than uh, previously is just the uh, fan community discussions uh, whether it's facebook or stuff like that looking at uh, certain mm -hmm. aspects of the film and just having some good deep discussions and um uh counterpoints to different things we thought were fact or true in the film or some things that people didn't even know about in the films mm -hmm. yeah and of course buying things always kind of helps cheer up the mood too so <laughs> <laughs> i i don't know about you but i've got a couple new things that are either here or coming my way one being, um, so the reset for June happened supposedly earlier this season, but I've not seen anything around me. My Walmart doesn't even have a Jurassic section. My Target is slowly been turning their Jurassic section into a uh, Minion section. Yeah. So I did have a friend pick up the two new masks for me, the male T-Rex and the male Raptor. So those arrived today and then i also got a free mug from a bunch of calendars i ordered uh back for uh christmas and so it finally told it, it i got an email that said oh your free mug offer is about to end i'm like oh free mug so i was going to put a jurassic the jurassic park logo on it but then i realized that might not get through copyright or whatever that I, I just didn't want to be told no you can't have this so mm -hmm. i went with the something has survived logo from the lost world and so i thought that would might that might be a bit more subtle and wouldn't trip any kind of sensors or anything like that you know ah nice choice it's yeah it's, i never even knew or i'm sure over here there's the same same sort of copyright like you're not supposed to do that sort of stuff but i don't think stores really um do much in the way of stopping it not as much as what i've heard like walmart over there and that um a lot of those photo centers even just getting a photo blown up into poster form or something like that just mm -hmm. replicating uh some sort of ip a lot of the companies over there don't don't want to touch it at all but that's that's all right something has survived <laughs> yeah i didn't want to well i wanted i was also considering one of my first or i mean one of my Redwood pictures from one of the Lost World filming locations, but 
then I figured I've got a Lost World mug, and in instances like these where I just have too many choices, I always <laughs> go with my first my, with my first choice, and I always go with my gut and my, on that. So that's what I went with. Yeah. But I also have some exciting news coming Monday. I bought a Jurassic Park three, and it was it's claimed to have been screen used. I can't screen match it, but it is a CT scan splice. One of the frames of the CT splice, uh, scan splices from the raptor skull Ooh. from that scene and is supposed to have been in that scene. I've seen other ones like it, so I'm pretty confident it's authentic. But at the same time, the certificate of authenticity that it comes with, it comes from a company that is kind of known for a history of fakes. Uh. So I'm pretty confident about the product, about the item itself. Not so much about the certificate of authenticity that comes with it. it it's not something that be you'd think would be um, drastically copied and faked. Mm-hmm. Um, well, the, the thing about it is it's a splice of the skull. So the skull in the movie is the whole skull. You don't actually see anything interior. This is a splice. Like they had, they, they had vertically sliced open the skull skull and you can see the spongy bone stuff inside Mm -hmm. and considering that we know that the c skull was was ct scanned or was meant to have been assumed to be ct scanned by the audiences so there's really no reason to fake an item that one it can't be isn't screen matchable and two is clearly matching other items that are already authentic. Mm. Yeah. yeah, this is this is a long way from Grant's Raptor Claw or something that someone can claim to be yeah. screen news when there's a million fakes out there. Well, there was, I, and I think we talked about this a couple of minutes ago, the Roland Stunt uh, Buffalo Rifle mm-hmm. that um, that we that had gone up for auction and I. I bid on it. I think I bid up to twelve hundred dollars on it. Ended up selling for twice that. Ended up selling for tw- uh, twenty five hundred dollars. And it was screen matchable. It had like dents or something on the on the prop that was you could match it to the prop from the from on screen. And, and so I'm kind of disappointed that I missed out on that. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I am. Yes, I am disappointed. I missed out on that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I couldn't spend that much money on it unfortunately have you my... have you gone back and especially in this world of hd and 4k um mm-hmm. had a look at the lost world and pieced together where what scenes he might have been carrying the fake and not because most of the scenes i can think of except for the real wide shots where they're trekking through the grass and that mm-hmm. all all the close-up shops are rolling would be that the the real weapon and not the fake mm-hmm. um there's at least two scenes that i know of where we where it's actually the real gun here's the one where it's put where he's putting it together yep where where we see all the pieces being put together that that would have been the real gun when he's taken out of the case and then when he fires at the at the t-rex and it makes that metallic click and he opens up the gun and pulls the and you see him pull the bullets out that would have been the real gun as well the rest of it, when he's just carrying it around, even if it was close-up shots, it was pretty much always the stunt rifle, because it was just so heavy. The, I mean, the real rifle was just so heavy, and it was just uncomfortable to carry for repeated shots. It would have they would have used the stunt rifle in almost all the movie. Yeah, because I'm thinking about when he leans up against a tree next to Sarah as well. That being so oh, that's, close. That, that's one of the. That's actually the shot they used to screen match it to the stunt rifle. Oh. I would have thought that would have been the the um, the hero as well, but no, that was the stunt. Wow. Because <laughs> I, I looked at it, I found the guy who bought it, and he posted it online with images matching the dents in the stunt rifle to the one where it's leaned up against the tree. And that's that's just fantastic when you get fans buying these items and then posting photos up and that they're not getting locked into a vault in someone's collection somewhere yeah that's that's great um, anyway that tangent over <laughs> back to figures <laughs> um that was all you got coming in yeah um i don't know if i t- discussed it last time i ended up getting the uh the electric 
uh, Carnotaurus, like the Primal Primal War one, or what they call the new one. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's here. Uh, the Indominus is rumoured to be here. There's been people getting it. Um, I heard one story from one Kmart of someone going in and asking them, and someone had just been in there and purchased all six of them and walked out. So unfortunately there's scalping going on <laughs> everywhere here so i'm still on the hunt for that hopefully i can find one soon oh, what else is there i'm just waiting for stuff to go on clearance <laughs> for the main part but it's it's hard because i went into one store yesterday and the only thing they had left in their jurassic world relayed was the baby blue which is the, like the mm-hmm. pe- the chibi baby blue and a couple of the original galamimus <laughs> it's all getting pushed out for chinosauruses which is a real shame. Mm. Yeah, I remember you telling me about the uh, the Toro Carnotaurus that you said that you or not, or not that one, the big electric one that they just came out with that you you told me that you got. You didn't tell me about the uh, Dominus though. Mm. So congratulations on that. I would get one, and people I have people have, have like said they're I'm surprised you're not getting one. I'm like I have nowhere to put it. I've got the Super Colossal T Rex, the Super Colossal Blue. <laughs> And the Brachiosaurus. I have no <laughs> no room for anything else of that size. <laughs> oh, no, this isn't the Super Colossal. This is just the regular. Oh. Yeah, oh, like right. fresh and fro size or whatever it was. But, um, yeah, yeah, yeah I've, got, that's, I've got that one too. That one's a great figure. So another reason why I'm not going to bother picking up the Super Colossal. I've already got a big Indominus in my collection. <laughs> Uh, it's going to happen soon. The the uh, Spinosaurus is sort of hitting, sitting around that $120 mark, so I'm probably going to jump on that real soon, even though it's a stupid price. But just before it jumps up even further, I, I'm willing to pay that to get that figure. That one, I was so happy, popped up on some kind of weird, like, off-site that turned out to actually send me the item. <laughs> <laughs> It was one of those, it popped up for $45, and so I was like, screw it, I'll bite the bullet, you know? Yep. And it, it did come. It, it was like a it was like a month with no tracking number, oh. but it did eventually come. <laughs> uh, so it, it does happen once in a while. <laughs> yeah. They're not all schemes, but yeah. stick to who you know. <laughs> Toy stores, you know. <laughs> Yeah, because it was just like one of those sketchy sites that, like, is it, you know? Well, and the worst thing is they seem to be paying Facebook more for advertising. I see that stuff on there all the time now. Mm-hmm. Lasers that can cut through timber and all this other sort of stuff. I've got no, <laughs> there's no way. And it's only 1995. I've got no report. Yeah. Report it, but I'm sure it's all still up there. <laughs> Sometimes, um, I mean, it's fun just to see what kind of shows up. I mean, you buy it. If it's something like this. If it's $20, you know? Like, yeah. Screw it. It's $20. Yeah. If but it I, shows up and it's stupid, I send it back. I paid $85 for something, and I got a little phone cradle. <laughs> a little plastic phone cradle. <laughs> so, yeah. I got bit hard by that one. Um, and I'm going to get bit by some uh, more expensive collectors we're going to talk about a little bit later in the, uh, in the news. But... Uh, mm-hmm. Dave, if that's it for Jurassic June, we'll get into some news. Yeah. Close up look at our majestic. None of these attractions are ready yet, of course, but the park will open with the basic tour you're about to take. And then other rides will come online six or twelve months after that. Absolutely spectacular design. Spared no expense. The news broke towards the start of the month. No, it wasn't towards the end of the month. Um we have a well known character from the first film returning in Dominion. Uh, Datsun, Datsun, we, we got Datsun here, <laughs> and that went viral everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I mean, I know, I did it with um, the photo. I, it was, it was, uh, what was his name? It's Campbell Scott, who was cast for him, and I know I definitely put that on our Instagram and Jurassicpedia's Instagram. It just a really quick and dirty mock-up of Datsun, Datsun. We got Datsun here. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, Campbell Scott being announced as the uh, the one to play Lewis Doxon coming back from the first film. Um, I, it says he was in both the Amazing Spider-Man films, but I don't recall him being... It's, it's good. I, I think don't... he was the chief of police who played Gwen Stacy's dad. No, that was Dennis Leary. 
Was that him? I don't yeah, know, I can't remember. <laughs> I'm just kind of pic- trying to picture the face of the characters I remember from the movie. Yeah, I'm not going IMDb to check, but the point is, I don't know the character, so I don't have any, any, well, not baggage, but um, it's it's not like seeing Chris Pratt here and going, well, it's Star Lord or Emmett from the Lego Movie. Yeah. It's I can see this guy, what he wants to do with Dodson, what he wants to uh, take from Crichton's attempt at him, although. It does. Uh, it does say here that um, he's going to be more of an inspirational Steve Jobs type uh, industrial uh, industrious leader um, mm-hmm. now being promoted to the uh, CEO position in Biosyn, which even in the original novel he wasn't the head. He was just head of research or something. He wasn't. Yeah, he, he was the head of research and development of Biosyn. But hey, he got a promotion in the last twenty years, <laughs> <laughs> which wouldn't. I, the Dodson in the novel I could see being shot or something <laughs> or just quietly led away um, with all the stuff he was getting up to in the novels. Um, well, that's why, if, like, this, Do- if this Dodson doesn't maliciously try to kill at least one of the main cast, I will be disappointed. Yeah. That's what Dodson is. He's just, he, like, experiments on rabies, with rabies vaccines on unsuspected, unsuspecting third world villages. You know, I mean, he's just not a nice person at all. Yeah, I, I and that's the um, that's the other problem too. Um, Cameron Four sort of played it a lot differently, or the character seemed a lot different than what was in the novel uh, in that first film. And I just sort of hope we, I know we're going to get a um, Nedry, or I've tried this once before, or something to reference Jurassic Park, mm-hmm. but um, I don't really need any more of that. Just give us the. Uh, Dogson we got from the f- novels and um, what we saw in the first film was what in the first film because as um, as it does say here and as a lot of people forget mm-hmm. he's <clears throat> he's named Dogson by Nedry there's no mention of bias and there's nothing like that um, this is just a, a, a the small um, uh, a conspiracy sort of thing to mm-hmm. make the park or get the dinosaurs out um, yeah and and this was kind of been the thing is because Dodson existed in the movies, but Biosyn before this point never did, and so it's always kind of been this limbo thing because Biosyn trying to sabotage and steal Engine's technology has been is kind of like the major catalyst of the two movie or I mean the two books, and so. It's. I think it was only in this press release that was released by um, what was it? Uh, Screen Rant or no? Who was it? It wasn't originally by Outpost. I Outpost reposted it. It was Collider. That's who it was. Yeah. I can't remember if it was Collider or Screen Rant. And they they must have gotten some kind of press release that was an exclusive that Biosyn I guess is now a thing. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's really exciting because. I know that, at least for me and a lot of other fans, Biosyn kind of being confirmed, one of those up-in-the-air things, has always been a fan want for at least the last three movies. But is it too late? <laughs> we we um, we discussed when the uh, the leaked plot came out uh, last month, if there, if there would be a Biosyn connection there. Mm-hmm. There's, they're, they're asking here... Is it possible that they uh, they did get the embryos from uh, New Blight even after the park shut down and stuff like that? I I can see it's going to be like a DPG style website with um, bias instead of Masrani, and there'll be a little bit of backstory there as to how they are now making their animals or something. There's going to be 25, 30 years of backstory here that we're not going to probably know anything about. Yeah, and that's kind of the unfortunate thing is that. I'm hoping that there's a more exposition in this movie. It's not just dino, dino roar after dino roar. But at the same time, the movies, even going back to the first, has never been... Exposition has never been the strong suit like it was in the novels. You know? Well, it's cram it all in. <laughs> cram as much exactly. as you can. Exactly, yeah. It's always been something kind of crammed in in one or two scenes. It's never really been this kind of... Like, throughout the novel, things are being unraveled and explained, whereas that's just not something that's ever happened in the movies. Mm. And just, the, the, like, looking at the backstory a little bit, this in the novel, there's supposed to be this um, big rival of InGen 
where like you have the okay maybe something had happened um they wasted or lost a lot of money trying to pay Nedry out and um that set them back or something but come 97 and the Tyrannosaur incident and mm -hmm. the world becoming aware of sauna because mm -hmm. there's, there's no proof that they knew about sauna at the time otherwise why pay Nedry when you can pay someone that's working on sauna or something else to get it from the source um then going there and doing it themselves, or seeing what um, research is still there. Mm -hmm. Ingen, Ingen well, failing for Chapter 11, swooping mm -hmm. in and purchasing them all. There's just, yeah, there's a lot of backstory there. Well, another thing is, the same day this was released, it was hinted at by one of the prop uh, makers for the movie that the Barbersaw can is also going to make an appearance yeah. in this movie. <laughs> and so... It's kind of interesting because Jurassic Park, the game, is kind of a quasi-canon, is kind of a shaky shaky thing in the canon verse in the movies. But it's presumed that regardless of whether canon or not, the, the cryo-can has been lost. It's either buried under mud and nobody knows where it is, or it's buried at the bottom of the North Dock and nobody knows where it is. But if it were managed to be found, even considering those embryos would not be viable the dna still would be and so it's kind of interesting that okay so you do have the so even if you do manage to get the dna would dodge know what to do with it mm -hmm. because he doesn't have woo he doesn't have the engine technology he doesn't have any of that to actually turn those dna sequences into a dinosaur you know yeah and so that's kind of an interesting thing that even if he did have it Maybe it wasn't until Engine's tech became open source in Fallen Kingdom that he had the means to actually produce anything. And even then, um, there has been rumors going around and take it with a huge block of salt because some of them are really, really out there. Like Excavaraptor is going to be uh, <laughs> in the movie. And if anybody remembers, that's something from the sales script that was um, – it was basically a Therizinosaurus mixed with a Deinonychus, and it had these huge excavating kind of claws, like a like a uh, pangolin in a way, mm -hmm. or a mole, <clears throat> and they were to dig out people, I guess. I don't know. It was it was weird. It was it was the sales script, <laughs> but anyway, they also suggested that. Um, I don't know. I forgot where I was, gonna, where I was going with this. <laughs> well, anyway, they suggested that. Biosyn had, in fact, been the ones poaching dinosaurs from the uh, from Isla Sorna, and that they're the ones mentioned in the DPG site as the poachers that um, that Hoskins ACU team had to defend Isla Sorna from. And that's that's a great bit of backstory. If they're the ones involved, if they whether they're hiring someone, mm -hmm. so I think if um, if Hoskins and that realized it was actually someone else going there and not um, like the, like a rival company going there to get tech instead of just poaching the dinosaurs for sport mm -hmm. or trophies, that would um, that would have sent the red flags up big time over there mm -hmm. on Sauna. Well, that's the other thing is that they were, they were in fact, not just poaching the technology. Because in theory, all DNA is, is four letters, G-T-C-A, and that becomes code that you could put up on a spreadsheet. And as long as you have that code on the spreadsheet, you have the DNA. Mm -hmm. You don't need a living dinosaur. You don't need the embryos. All you need is the code and, cre and go from there so long as you know what to do with it, like Wu did. And so even if they're stealing computers or stealing dinosaurs, it doesn't matter because they get, they get what they need, basically. And if anybody remembers the novels... Isla Sorna's, the, the lab facilities had these DNA codes kind of just lying around the factory floor. So mm -hmm. all you have to go in there, do is go in there, steal a bunch of uh, papers, and get out, basically, without getting eaten. <laughs> yeah, that's the hard part. Yeah, I'd, you, you keep saying without Wu being involved. I'd, I've got a stink suspicion I'm going to stand fast to a, a theory that... Um, they're gonna they're gonna tie bias it into Jurassic World and Fallen Kingdom by um by maybe bankrolling 
helping the bankroll mills, um, Lockwood, and all that sort of stuff going there because mm-hmm. the, the whole the whole Indoraptor and those sort of consumer products for the military seem like a biosyn thing and not an in-gen thing, but just trying to... I mean, to, they uh, do. Mm-hmm. And the thought has certainly crossed my mind, but at the same time, it almost feels too obvious. And I don't want it to be obvious. As you know, obvious I, want it, I want it to be complicated. As obvious as, oh, no, that first map wasn't right. The lagoon's really over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh... Anyway, we've spent a lot of time on this. I wanted to have layers, you know? Yeah. Yeah. We can only hope. I'd... Yeah. Yeah. I'd, Sorry, I don't go know. ahead. I, I, don't know. I don't know if the uh, the ride they've got and if Colin can pull this one out of the park for us. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, um... Yeah. We'll, we'll see. They are, they are keeping to that June 21st release schedule, so... Uh, June 2021 next year, so mm-hmm. we will we will see what happens uh, moving on and in the future. I think they'll have that on the tour. And jumping ahead just over one news story, that is actually because the Dominion schedule, um, not, uh, it didn't affect the Dominion schedule just because they had shot all these scenes that, according to Trevor, were very... VFX heavy, and so they got they were able to get a head start on post production activities before they could before they necessarily got to those activities needing to be done, and so they were actually able to knock out their entire um, their entire uh, intro the five minute intro that will be in this movie was able to be knocked out all during that time, so they actually got a lot of work done. It's just that we didn't... It wasn't behind the camera. Mm. Yeah, well, that article is a, um, a report by Cinema Blend with an interview with Colin Trevorrow about how the uh, the set shutdown worked in the movie's advantage. It's... Yeah, as, as it says sort of here, like, further down, it, um, a lot of movies, they've got to spend their time shooting before VFX works can start and all that. We're here... Um, they were already f- filming for four weeks and managed to get all the uh, stuff done for that intro, and um, and now the VFX team can go go to work on it. Mm-hmm. Which has me thinking about this five minute intro now, considering we've seen the snow, the timber mill, Oregon, and um, and Maisie, and the uh, the uh, what was the name of that island in Canada? Oh, Vancouver. Oh, Vancouver, yeah. The, wasn't there an island there, someone they filming drone stuff on? I thought it was actually on Vancouver Island. Oh, okay, itself. Vancouver Island, okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I think we're going to get some different scenes or some different shots in the uh, the intro. Mm-hmm. But, a lot, yeah, a lot of films, they, they have to shoot first and then spend a lot of time on the VFX afterwards. And a lot of films have... Uh, there's been issues with effect shots not being done, trying to keep mm-hmm. to a release time. And as I said before, they're still they're still mentioning here that uh, the film's coming out in June next year, so they are going to keep to that that release timeline. It's eleven months, which is a lot of time for a film's production. But well, um, another kind of great thing I guess about this movie is they're filming a lot of it overseas, so they're going to be going to Malta and they'll be filming a lot of it. A lot of the studio shots in Pinewood Studios, so they don't have to kind of constrain to the United States handling of coronavirus. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I I don't know what the world situation. You know, I haven't been looking too far in the world situation with uh, what's still locked up and what's not. Um, they've only been mentioning here that we probably won't see international travel again until next year, but I'm mm-hmm. sure they're um, they're doing what they have to to get. Uh, mm-hmm get everything done, be out of trouble. And, and plus, like you said, they um, there's been movies, even Jurassic World, released trailers without finished uh, visual effects. And so and you, as the trailers continue, you're seeing them finishing the visual effects. You know? well, so it's kind of great that, like Trevor said, they can kind of really lock down the visual effects as they want them to be without feeling rushed. Yeah, well, that's it. Like the teasers we normally get for Thanksgiving and that, that weekend... Um, for films that are still seven months away, <laughs> and we've, yeah, we've seen that happen before. So, 
So yeah, it's good good to see it's not all bad news from the uh, the mm -hmm. from the set. Ian, the animal's dehydrated. The first thing it's going to do is go to a water source, and then it's going to look for the next thing its body needs. All the containment equipment is here. We've got to get it back to the dock. The boat might still be seaworthy. Right, all right. Am I thinking what you're about to say? When we brought the baby to the trailer, it came. Oh, There's no stay. reason to think it won't do the same thing here. Yep. We do have some more news uh, for the film, but before we get to that, we'll duck back into the toy news briefly. Um, SDCC exclusives for this year. Even though the event's not taking place at San Diego, I think there is something... Or there was something uh, online regarding panels and everything. And um, is it Entertainment Earth that uh, put this up? Yeah, Entertainment Earth put up a pre-order for a exclusive Dennis Nedry Barbasol set, um, mm -hmm. which <laughs> they've outdone themselves on this thing. Oh yeah, this this thing is really amazing, and apparently the th fans thought so too because this thing was like <laughs> sold out in an hour. I yeah. want to say. But yeah, it comes in a little... The packaging it comes in is the cryo can. You kind of twist the top and it reveals the figure behind a little bubble, a uh, little kind of like card bag bubble thing. And apparently you press the top of like where you would a shaving cream can to release the shaving cream. It it is electronic. It, it has quotes from Nedry. <laughs> yeah, I like the um, I like the actual activator for that's in the base. So you push the top, and the whole thing pushes down and activates the mm -hmm. sounds. But yeah, it's got the voice. I I hope Wayne Knight. Oh, I suppose they just rip it from the film, couldn't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, so all the probably got all these great lines in there, and just the accessories. It comes with his bag of money, um, a little mm -hmm. mini cryo can, the the pie with the shaving cream on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny, actually. And I, I, I sort of wish it had the yellow coat to go over the top of everything as well, with a little Jurassic Park ID label on there. But it's um, it's just good that his gripped hand sort of it can hold the bag, but it can put that shaving cream on top of the pie as well on that plate. This one, I mean, I missed out on it by like several hours. It had gone up for pre-order while I was still asleep, and so. I had I didn't find out about it until it was already even sold out, but I didn't really mind because I already have the cryo can coming from um, what is it uh, Chronicle Collectibles, and I ordered through them, so I'll also get that ID Nedry ID badge that is coming with. Yep. So I mean, it's not like I feel like I'm missing out on anything because of course Amber the Amber Collection also revealed their Dennis Nedry with their Dilophosaurus and their it looks great too, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, it's not overly screen accurate in the face, but it it still looks fantastic. I um, I need is I need to watch the film now. It's, he's wearing um sort of those slip on sandals here. I I don't think we actually see his feet in the whole film. I think that they're basing the look of this figure on oh, his San Jose scene. That's yeah, why you yeah. had the bag of money. Yep. In the Hawaiian shirt. Yeah, because he's yeah. got the white, the white um, Parker and that on when he's in the control room. Yeah. I think it's oh, in the gray. pie with the uh, shaving <laughs> cream on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I always felt sorry for whoever ate that pie. <laughs> like, uh, I remember yeah. being a kid and wondering what it would taste like and being absolutely disgusted with the taste and never trying it again. So you know that person's getting getting a very bad day coming his way. Well, when I was young, I didn't even realize it was shaving cream. I thought it was just like cream, um, like dairy cream, <laughs> um, aerosol cream. So I'd never thought anything of it until oh, it'd have to be a long, a long time later, where someone actually said, "No, nah, that's Barbasol's actually a shaving." Even though it says Beard Buster on the can. I, yeah, maybe it was well, a time dad, of the internet. My in dad the... always used Barbasol, so I was always around it, and I use it now too. So it was just, I understood it was for shaving, but I was also wondering if it tastes like whipped cream because he did put it on the pie. <laughs> <laughs> it did not taste like whipped cream. I do not suggest trying it. No, no. No, well, see, we don't get Barbasol products here, so <laughs> it would have been around the 2000s when we finally got the internet here, um looking back and seeing 
stills or something from the film, they'll probably realise, oh, that's... Yeah, that guy, someone's eating shaving cream. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah that's fantastic and for 20 bucks it's I mean, uh, see we would have had the same problem here if the, as they did with the Hammond the Hammond figure they made last year just mm-hmm. making X amount for convention exclusive and selling them at the convention then they ended up um, advertising a few online because they obviously had some left over and here they've probably made the same thousand or something what? That's another thing is that Hammond then just now just recently got repacked with a um, when dinosaur ru- dinosaurs ruled the earth multi pack so it's got the two brown Jurassic Park raptors a welcome to Jurassic Park banner Ellie and Hammond so somewhere down this road the figure is probably going to get repacked anyway so I don't feel like I'm losing out but if I don't buy it right now mm-hmm. you know. Plus, I think the uh, the market for Hammond sort of started to come down a bit on eBay and that, so mm-hmm. hopefully I can do, be able to get him and the uh, Nedry a little bit later on when all the, uh, the lunacy <laughs> drops. It's cool to compartmentalize inside. You guys, oh, that's great! Customs can even check it if they want to. Go on. There's enough coolant inside for 36 hours. No menthol? The, em- the embryos have to be back here in San Jose by then. Uh, moving on, um, there's not a lot of moving uh, happening movie-wise <laughs> around the world at the moment. So some of the uh, old films are coming back and being rescreened. And um, this month, being Jurassic June, of course, some uh, drive-in theaters and that were showing the original Jurassic Park again. That shot back to uh, number one at the box office for its fourth <laughs> time in history. They say um, only earning half a million, which seems <laughs> pretty pretty petty in the grand scheme of things, but. Uh, both it and Jaws have both seen a real mm-hmm. resurgence uh, at the movie theaters again. Well, the thing is, I mean, it's Jurassic Park. It's always, it's never not going to be popular. So, even I remember back in 2013 when they released Jurassic Park 3D, and then they released um, the they had it released the 3D version, and then they just had the regular Blu-ray version in theaters, and I of course saw both. So even if you even if you have like other things going on, Jurassic Park will pretty much always be popular and is pretty much always guaranteed to be a money maker. So it's a pretty safe bet to put in into theaters as much as you want. It's the it's one of the perfect escape films. You get on a helicopter and head off to New Bluff for a weekend. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And then run for your life. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's how it always starts. Uh, and then later there's running and screaming. <laughs> yeah. I'd... It's it's funny that Jaws sort of showed, uh, shared some of the same success with uh, mm-hmm. doing well at the box office as well. I wonder how many uh, pre, pre-30-year-olds, maybe, um, are watching Jaws nowadays and um, seeing what... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll drop maybe I'll, I'll maybe pre twenty fives. Maybe pre twenty five, then I'll drop the bar. Oh, a little bit. <laughs> Even then, it's kind of push. I'd say pre pre twenty year old. Yeah. Because I'm showing. I remember my dad used to always like to watch this. It was Jaws and Terminator Two were the two big yep. movies. Yep. I always remembered watching on TV whenever they were on TV, and so um, those were two movies I pretty much always loved was Terminator 2 and Jaws besides of course Jurassic Park and Star Wars but I remember showing it to my little cousin and he just turned 18 but the first time I ever showed it to him he was probably I don't know 9, 7, 8, 9, 10 some, somewhere he was, he was he, he wasn't a teenager yet he was old he was probably eh. Let's see, is probably, I think, about 2010. He probably would have been about 9 or 10 at the time. So I think that I remember when the first time I showed him, he asked me, is the, is the that water CGI? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how many people his age are watching it, but I know it's still loved by people my age. <laughs> yeah, because it's sort of the one big thing growing up, like, you uh you're either influenced by your parents what they watch music mm-hmm. movies that sort of thing or uh you go complete the 180 oh that's old crap and <laughs> i want to do my own thing with all this new stuff 
I think something like Jurassic Park, whether you're uh, whether you're 15 or 50, it sort of it hits home for mm-hmm. everyone. Jaws well, with that shark. And... Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say Jaws with uh, that down down shark not working. In... <laughs> it's it's funny. It's I was watching a friend at work's. He's a real mm-hmm. big fan of the Dukes of Hazard, and uh, just watching some of the some scenes from the original TV show, and that's like. Yes, in the eighties or the early early eighties when that show was being produced, um, a lot of the, the car stunts, how many cars they destroyed by doing practical <laughs> practical stunts and that it was something that hadn't been seen a lot of at the time, whereas now of course it's all mostly CG or wrecked cars and everything mm-hmm. else. It sort of loses the um how important it was at the time. But yeah. Well that's what I was gonna add on is that the effects of Jurassic Park are just so well done. I mean they did it so well back then that it's really only just now really showing its age with four K screens. And so it really took really, really, really ramping up that high definition to really start noticing the flaws in the movie. You watch it on something like the something like what would it be like 480 quality uh, for VHS? <laughs> you don't see it at all. Well, of course, it's yeah. harder. It's harder to put VHS quality on a screen and still get the same audience. But yeah. And we've 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 talked numerous times about directors back then, sort of not um, not foreshadowing how high def, how how much the fans are going to be able to zoom into every little detail, how. That mm-hmm. third third arm for the T one thousand flying helicopter is easily going to be seen <laughs> in um, the future of high def and so so forth. But that's that's yeah, that's it. You go pop the VHS in or even just a DVD of Jurassic Park and it holds up as much as it needs to. It, yeah, it, it doesn't. This continuing to four K and eight K and spread those pixels or multiply pixels just to get a better quality. Um, there's only so far you can go before it's going to be um, bad for the film you're trying to do it to. Mm-hmm. Where other things like The Lost World has that, that grainy sort of look suits it a lot more. It doesn't mm-hmm. need to be sparkly, shiny, new. <laughs> well, the other thing that, like, that Spielberg did with the first two movies is he used a lot of effect shots and night so you don't notice the um, the defects as much because they're hidden in the dark and the fog and the rain. Yeah. yeah. Whereas movies like Jurassic World today is bright, sunny CGI, and it just doesn't age. It'll it won't age as as well. Mm-hmm. And Twenty that's... years from now, Jurassic World will not probably look as good as Jurassic Park did. Yeah. Twenty at, at its age. Yeah, and that's that's been one of the big discussions coming up during Jurassic June too is just. If Jurassic Park still looks better now than what Jurassic World does CG wise and all that, and as as you said, they they cheated a fair bit in that first film to hide <laughs> hide a lot of stuff. Um, it, there's, there's, it's hard to hide um, the CG issues when the animals in broad daylight. Um, mm-hmm. I'll I'll take you straight back to that Brachiosaurus scene. <laughs> it's, it's it's a little smooth in places. The texturing wasn't quite there because that thing's in direct sunlight and really mm-hmm. close to the camera. But but then you get the animatronic stuff later on and you sort of forget all about that. <laughs> so, good tangent, good tangent. <laughs> uh. Meet the future of paleontology. It's a rapid prototyper. I enter in the scan data from the raptor skull. The computer breaks it down to thousands of slices, and this thing sculpts it one layer at a time. It's done. While we're talking about some of the older films, um, David, I think this come from Instagram, uh, Vanessa Lee Chester. I think at the start of the year, someone broke into her house, or anyway, her figures, her Lost World figures were stolen. Mm -hmm. Just fill us in on what actually happened there. I think it was her apartment or something. Somebody broke into her apartment, stole her whole Jurassic Park collection or something, and she asked for people to keep an eye out on eBay if they see anything being advertised as hers, let her know. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that she'd lost was her figure of herself, of Kelly Malcolm from The Lost World, and so she posted it on Instagram. It was kind of a um, thank you post slash uh, look at this post. Because she earlier at the um, in the 
in the month, I had put together a Black Lives Matter uh, post for Pedia, and it included her, I think, um, it had Samuel L. Jackson, her, that screaming guy from the long grass, um, Nash, uh, Franklin, and uh, um, Barry from Jurassic World. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was, it was, it was, it was split as uh, line black. And then it's the first three uh, movies, those characters, and then it said lives, and then it said it had the next three pictures, and then at the bottom it was matter. It was, it was a cool picture. It was just something I whipped up, but she really liked it, so she ended up reposting it, and then she actually thanked, thanked pretty much me, thanked me and Jurassicpedia where I had shared it. That she called, she called me one of her favorite Instagram accounts. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so she posted pictures of her basically posing with the figure and posted thank you at the bottom mm. of the post. Uh, that's great. Again, actors like interacting with the uh, the fans. Mm-hmm. We don't get a lot of it in the Jurassic series, but that's great to see. And I, she didn't. Man, I, she just said that the Jurassic stuff was stolen, nothing else. But that seems like a crazed fan or something. If you're breaking into her place just to steal her action figures um, yeah and not computers iphones everything <laughs> everything else when mm-hmm. it could it could have been um it could have been stolen as well but she was just focusing on the jurassic stuff for the uh mm-hmm. jurassic community but yeah uh, that's that's great to see i, no, I don't know where i was gonna go off that <laughs> <laughs> um i was just trying to think whether um whether stuff was donated back to her or or if the stuff was found, but I suppose we don't really know, do we? I don't know. I, I presume they probably tracked down the thief and maybe uncovered it among his stuff or something, you know? Yeah, yep. I just wanted to make dinner. I want it ready when you guys got back. Another actor that's sort of been getting out and getting in touch with the community again is uh, Camilla Bell. Um, Kathy Bowman posting up uh, a couple of behind the scenes photos that I'd, mm-hmm. I've, well, I've certainly never seen them before um, obviously photos she had at home or, or somewhere one was uh, on the beach with Spielberg and the rest of the family uh, during yeah. that, that scene of course and uh, another one I find a little bit more interesting is the uh, her and Pete Postlethwaite and RJ there looks like he's got a big <laughs> stogie in his hand on the, on the mm-hmm. Cuban um but uh, they're obviously sitting down to eat. This looks a lot like Eureka in the background. Um, no, it wouldn't be because she'd never visited that. This, I think, is Kipukaya Ranch, which is where they filmed the end scene and a couple of the trek scenes, as well as the opening scene. Uh, okay, because yeah, I was just thinking a lot of the uh, Hawaii stuff we've seen was sort of a lot greener, and then mm-hmm. the um. Obviously, because of California's drought, they have at the time. The Eureka net was a lot mm. drier, that drier grass and the, the pine sort of forest in the background. Because that was going to be the next question. Did she, in fact, mm. <laughs> visit the Eureka set, even though she wasn't filming there? But obviously not. Yeah, I, I some of the... I think it's the photography from the time is kind of what else was doing. It's bleaching out some of the yeah. browner looks. Because I know some of the cards that I have... Not the or not cards, but those... Uh, little pop-up cards that I have mentioned on this before had some behind the scene uh, photos and some location scout photos and they all look like this it's with that kind of color drain bleached out look yeah also funny here too if the um, the sort of what she wrote to go with the photo it just reminds me of Timmy in the first film quizzing Grant about everything about his book and dinosaurs where he she's um, quizzing Pete about the uh, working with Daniel Day-Lewis on Romeo and Juliet and that and some of his <laughs> other career choices like here you are this fantastic actor on set and you're not talking about The Lost World you're talking about some of the films you would have seen previously mm-hmm. and I kind of forgot to add it in here but I meant to and this is reminding me of it is that Stan Winston Studio did reveal or not Stan Winston Studio but Stan Winston School did reveal a um thing I'd never seen before, never even knew it existed, but it was a maquette head of the Mementiosaur. Oh, okay. And so they kind of sh- they posted a photo of them sculpting it, in progress painted, and then finished painted. And it's really weird because 
I mean, it doesn't look anything like the um, Mementiosaurus head that was used in the traveling exhibit. It's kind of more like an Apatosaurus head, but more like the Mementiosaurus as it would have looked in um, in real in from as a skeleton. But the other thing is is that its color was kind of this jungle green with uh, stripes. Presumably, I think they, motive, they must have created this concept maquette back when the um, back when the Omentiosaurus went to play a larger role in the Stegosaurus scene for the Lost World, and it just never happened, and we just they, they never paid attention to it again. But I still think it's really, really cool to still find that there's still things you had no idea existed in these movies. Mm. That's all right. I thought you were going to say they released photos of a uh, <laughs> a, a bust of Kathy all chewed up. <laughs> no, no. So, but um, and I believe we talked about this when we talked about the Lost World. You can see photos of them passing around, or I mean, you can see the silhouette of Kathy as you, they're passing around a photo of her smiling at the camera with her head all bandaged up. Well, briefly, while you're on that topic too, it's again seeing conversations in the fan community, um, TV stations or networks still playing the boardroom scene in The Lost World when they're on TV, even now, so so much later, and with Universal not wanting that to be canon. But um. well, at the same time, I think they're kind of accepting it now because not only does the DPG kind of refer to a cleanup effort they did in 1994, but they air this uh, copy, the TV cut of The Lost World so often that it's kind of, you're kind of reluctant to accept it as canon now, you know? Hmm, yep. Mommy! Daddy! You've got to come see this! I found something! Getting back into some Dominion news now, and at the start of the month we had a sh- uh, set release pick, or unofficial set release pick of uh, the Pine Forest's um, what we're guessing was in Pinewood. There's a boom crane here and some uh, other set sort of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, the set images kept continuing um, these last couple of weeks. A lot of a uh, lot of fake plantings and uh, dressings are going to add to these trees to make it look like Vancouver. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's um, one of the first images we got was I think uh, late June was posted by a guy on Reddit who snapped a picture of them starting to set up at the pine exterior sets at Pinewood Studios, these being the same exterior sets that stood in for the California Redwoods in Fallen Kingdom. And so, like I said, we get this one picture here with them just got the boom crane out there, and then we got some other photos of them starting to move stuff, plantings and stuff into place. And one of the photos we got was of this board where they had tacked up a bunch, a bunch of photographs that I assume they took at Vancouver. And it looks like they're just trying to set match these photographs and trying to recreate these photographs at Pinewood Studio. Yeah, I think initially it was believed they were going to be, they were actually storyboards or something on Mm -hmm. this board. But when you, and it is a good quality photo, you can sort of get in there close and have a look at it and see that it's now it's um, photos of... uh, some interesting looking um, environments <laughs> from mm. Vancouver that I can't wait to see on screen. Yeah, and some of these photos are honestly beautiful. I'm kind of, I'm really, really hoping that Jason Schwartzman doesn't ruin them with some kind of <laughs> really <laughs> stupid, dumb filter or, or mm. anything like that. Because I mean, some of these, like some of these photos that I sent you that have been posted by Brysonator on Twitter. Of course, I mean, you got the Arcadia Crew no no or Arcadia Crew only no authorized access sign on one of the things. Pictures of the set trimmings and stuff, just general stuff of them setting up the shoot and filming it. But I mean, some of these you get like you get this one where there's a fallen tree crossing the top of the frame, and is framing two of the um, of the hoist in the photo and it, those big blue hoists in the photo and it's just it's a beautiful photo of its own right and I won't deny I took a couple of these photos and I posted them on Twitter and I asked Colin Trevorrow these are really beautiful photos I'm really hoping a couple will make it make it into the art book you know because oh. there's that art book that they're coming up I mean yes they're leaked <laughs> photos yes I apprised the director that they're being leaked 
at the same time, they're really, really beautiful photos, and I do think they deserve to be in the art book. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's uh, securities being notified long before you <laughs> <laughs> said to leave, which which is a shame because, as you said, they are nice photos, and it is good to see them, mm-hmm. um, even if they're being obtained illegally, question mark? <laughs> not, not officially, anyway. Um <sighs> Even the even the, the next lot of photos here you posted, um, which must have been only the last day or two mm-hmm. of this uh, fake rock it's in the middle of the pines. Boulder? It's a rock. It's a rock. <laughs> it's a big, beautiful old rock. The pioneers just, yeah. just drive these babies around for miles. <laughs> uh, and just the pine trees all around and the ferns in front of it. Just it sets a um a good scene. Mm-hmm. What we're but, gonna see. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, there's one photo of the uh, crane moving the, the fake rock into place, just moving down the road. The way the photo is set up, the colors of it, it's a really nice photo of his own right, you know? Yeah, I'm glad long ago that gone are the days of the uh, the phone in the top pocket trying to snap <laughs> a shot or something in 380 or mm-hmm. 240 or something. <laughs> well, it's also, I mean, it's really a, a testament to what phone cameras can do today. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's all happening with uh, Dominion. And then we get a report from... Uh, did I mention it here? The I, fir- think I, uh-huh. did. I was going to say, the first place that I saw this report was in The Sun, which is a British newspaper known for its kind of tabloid stand, uh, stand. Same with um, the Daily Mail, who also picked it up. And they claimed that uh, somebody tested positive on the set, and they were now shutting down production completely. And I was, I heard somebody, uh, somebody let me know this in uh, chat, and I was like, "Oh, you gotta be joking!" And then I'm, I'm, and then I'm like, "It's the sun." I'm gonna wait for official news here, and eventually, <laughs> official news did come out. They said, "Okay, so yes, they're, they're, uh, they didn't say that whether or not somebody had gotten COVID or anything, but they did say, we are not shutting down production. We're going to be keep going. This is all light to go, you know? Yeah, it is worded worded one way to, mm-hmm. <laughs> to say that, yes, that, that, there's, that we're not denying the COVID thing, but we have not shut down production. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just one of those things, I mean, you can see that they're, they didn't deny it, but they didn't confirm it either, so you kind of got to read between the lines, you know? Yeah. And they they were putting all sorts of precautions in because it was bound to, bound to happen. Oh, yeah. With um, a production crew that big, and mm-hmm. those those people working together would be isolated, whatever else, 14 days, and then I'd assume back at it. But again, it could be, it could be someone working at the VFX at home on their computer or... The, just having someone come down with it doesn't mean they were on set um, and all this sort of stuff as well. So, but in the end, you can tell the National Choir and the Washington Post what do you feel like. But I was there, I know it happened. So do you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's good to see that um, production's going to keep on going and steaming towards that June next year release date. Mm-hmm. Don't get too excited, Billy. Chances are we won't see a thing. Let's uh, get into some of the high-end stuff now. Uh, Chronicle this month have uh, released images and details on their upcoming Breakout Raptor. Um, the design and everything going on here has um, been praised and not so much praised by some in the community. <laughs> um, I'm all for it. Dave Monkey, you have some issues with, uh, again, their colouring. I do like the kind of stand they got it on and I think that's neat to, that they've done this whole scene we don't see it on screen but it would be cool to see but I'm not a fan of the raptor and that's kind of sad because that's supposed to be the centerpiece of the whole thing and I mean yeah it's a nice raptor I mean yeah it's kind of it sculpturally looks pretty sound but at the same time it kind of looks like one of those like 90s generic raptors in the coloration it looks like it's trying to be jp jurassic park but it's not jurassic park it just has the long gated long um stripes going all across it like almost like a zebra and it just doesn't it doesn't i don't like how it looks it 
I thought Iron Studios did a better job representing the CGI version of the Raptor versus this not rep- really representing any version of the Raptor. You know? Yeah, and that's that's when you can really see the difference is when you compare it to the kitchen scene Raptors that I've just seen some photos of then. Just, just a completely different skull, mm-hmm. sort of different look. You you posted something really good on, I don't know if it was the Chronicle site or the Pedia site when this people were sharing this around. This same Raptor with um, slight alteration in the colours towards the Lost World and having it on top of that killing house in this crouching pose. Um Oh, yeah. It does seem more. It does seem more like a Lost World Raptor to me than a JP Raptor. It does, but I, at the same thing, time, there was something I wanted to bring up because I do like the concept. I do. I, I just think that it could be better. And an idea that I proposed that they could do it with, say, the male version of the Raptor was, like you mentioned, that kind of sliced the kiln room, kiln kiln shed roof. Um. In half, we have make it a little make it electronic and a little light on the top blinks or lights up or whatever, and then you just have the raptor swap out the female for the male because we already have the female here, and you have the male there crouching at the edge of the um of the kiln shed like the one is like this raptor is here crouching on the edge of the um raptor pen. Railing, it looks like, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder if it's... Because we're sort of having these issues with all the Chronicle stuff. Um, the sick Triceratops was the same with its colouring. Um, I'm not going to bring up the Breakout T-Rex again, but... <laughs> uh, I wonder if they're just going off some of those original concept art or something and then just adding their own little flair to it just mm-hmm. to be a little bit different, but still... Um, because if we see it definitely with the Iron Studios, with the like the human figures, they're not that spot on. They're just sort of close enough. You, mm-hmm. Oh, that's Malcolm or Grant. Um, we're not going full photo real- realistic here. Where the animals, it's more so just the paint and detail. It's not trying to get a human face to uh, look like a character. It's mm-hmm. it's an animal that I'm, I would assume they got the license for. Yeah. I don't but know not, how you can't just do it. I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, I, I just don't know how you just can't do what what's on the photos. <laughs> Even though we've seen that original animatronics do have a bit more of a stripe pattern on them than what we've seen in the <laughs> film. Um, not to this extent. But I will say that now that you bring that up, I do see that, especially like in the legs and in the body, how the paint pattern they have here does very much resemble the kind of final approved color concept for the Velociraptor for the first movie. Mm-hmm. So that may, so you are right, that could be what they are basing it off of. Yeah, and we're, we're going to get to a little at the end um, what some toy company, what Kenner done with some of their figures before the film coming out because mm-hmm. they, uh, all the secrecy in that, but one thing I do love here, and we'd never actually see... We only get the shot of uh, where they escaped from Muldoon's perspective as they're walking past. And it was only, uh, again, talking with someone on Facebook uh, in a discussion there about the Raptor breakout scene and mm. the fact that one of the um, pylons posts, the fence posts, is missing where the Raptors escaped. And here on this, um, on the, the stand for this figure, you've got the fence in the background, you've got the... Like the Dinobolt holes where...